Mason Greenwood's Manchester United career is in tatters, but how did the club handle it all? I'm joined now by Shane Hannan, co-presenter of Off The Ball Breakfast, to give us his view. Good morning, Shane. Morning, Anton Everything's Challenging thing for the club, because on the one hand, you don't want to preempt a possible conviction. On the other hand, you don't want to define your morality just by legality. Exactly. Um, and this is a very uh, nuanced and grey subject. It's a difficult one. Um, so th- this, I guess the news this week on Monday, Manchester shouted at the club announcing that Mason Greenwood and the club were mutually agreeing to go their separate ways. Um, and for anyone unfamiliar with this story, it follows a, a six-month internal probe into Greenwood's behaviour from the club. He was accused of attempted now, rape. Yeah, let's just give a little warning because we do need to discuss what the actual accusation yes. was. So we are going to be uh, discussing matters relating to sexual assault. So if you find that um, in any way difficult to deal with, you can return for the 11 o'clock news. Sorry, Shane, go on. Absolutely, because uh, it is a difficult subject to, to discuss, of course. Um, but he was accused, Mason Greenwood, of attempted rape and controlling behaviour in January of 2022. These charges ultimately were dropped in February of this year um, and uh, the charges uh, dropped by the Crown Prosecution Service but United, the club themselves, have spent the last six months doing an internal investigation. But he was accused through a leaked audio tape. So there, yes. it wasn't just that there was an accusation. There was evidence made public that we all heard. Very unsightly and uh, a, t- a tough tape to listen to and a lot of people will have heard them did the rounds on social media a number of months back uh, and, and not an easy tape to listen to. Um, and it, it's kind of led to a, a whole moral issue because even though these charges, as I say, were dropped, the club, from their own moral perspective, were had, having to make their own decision. Well, do we still want this footballer to be playing uh, for the club? Because, as you said, the tape is still doing the rounds. And I'm right in saying, Shane, that it, there was the tape, but the accusation, the original allegation came from his um, fiancée, isn't that yes, correct? Yes, his partner at the time. Um, now, the, the the anonymity of her like, throughout the whole process was kept. And, and I mean, obviously, it's a, it's, it's a thing. Like, Mason Greenwood, even to this day, currently has a, you know, a, a child just arrived. He's got a lot of things on his plate as well. Um, but it, it was just the manner in which the whole thing was handled. Even Richard Arnold, the Manchester United CEO, it, it almost feels to a lot of United fans, I think, that they have maybe for a lot of fans, come to the right conclusion, but it's how they got there maybe that was the the difficult thing. Eric Ten Hag, the Manchester United manager, was <clears throat> apparently only told uh, last Sunday that this decision was made. We were told on Monday, so he's only told a day before. Richard Arnold had apparently come to the, the decision on Friday night. The, the feeling, Anton, is that there were almost feelers put out by the club in the last couple of weeks to try and see well, what would the public make of this? What would fans make of this if we did reintegrate Mason Greenwood back into the Manchester United squad? Um, and the reaction was was quite negative. Um, he, he, Richard Arnold in his statement even said, look, we were taking our time. We didn't want to even disrupt the, the Lionesses, the England World Cup squad by, by, by getting involved in this because even there are Manchester United women's team players involved in that squad. Uh, they wanted to, to discuss with them as well what their views might be on. Uh, I guess walking around the Carrington training session with uh, our centre with Mason Greenwood as a, as a first team squad member again. Um the United explanation was that they have a duty of care to the player. He's under he was under contract, of course. He's been at the club since the age of seven. Um, but look, he's an extraordinarily gifted footballer. There's no getting away from that. And from Eric Ten Hag's perspective, uh, from a footballing only perspective, he apparently wanted him back involved, taken out of account of everything else, but accepted that ultimately the club were going to come uh, to their own decision. But it's led to a lot and of weird feeling. Do we know how they weighed up that decision? Because if if you wanted to devil's advocate it, you can say, well, the the charges were dropped, therefore the, the presumption of innocence until proven guilt applies. Mm. This man has not been convicted of anything. Why, therefore, is the onus on Manchester United to ultimately dismiss him? Because we assume that's what occurred. Yeah, it, that's that's probably the, the pinnacle question in this, in all of this. It's a very difficult one. And and even people quite were questioning why United needed to do a six-month investigation, internal investigation themselves. Maybe an investigation like that should or could have been done by an independent uh, committee or someone that they could have hired to do it on their behalf. Uh, because obviously United have vested interest in all of this. Um, Mason Greenwood is a, is, a, is a product, basically, of their academy. Uh, he's he's a player that brings in a lot of money for them. Or certainly before all of this, in jersey sales, uh, his goals for the first team. He's still the youngest. Uh, you know, he's got the most goals for a teenager at the club ahead of Rooney and Ronaldo and these lads. Um, I, I think United just wanted to assess what the stakeholders involved uh, made of all this, made of a potential Mason Greenwood return. As, as recently as two weeks ago, certainly the view from within the, within the club was that he was going to be allowed back into the first team, uh, and that has taken a complete flip. And uh, in, in the last couple of weeks, Richard Arnold has uh, changed his mind entirely, released a statement to the fans as well, ex- explaining the reasons. In, in 
really extensive detail explaining the reasons behind the whole decision and and saying he you know he took his time and wanted to I guess address everyone that I think Mason Greenwood's um, his part the uh, woman in question at the, at the uh, height of all of these investigations and uh, accusations uh, her mother took part in the United investigation and they accepted the findings at the end that uh, Greenwood himself in his own statement says I was brought up to know that violence or abuse in any relationship is wrong I did not do the things I was accused of and in February I was cleared of all charges and then he goes on to say however I fully accept I made mistakes in my relationship and I take my share of responsibility for the situations which led to the social media post this is the of course the audio clip uh, it's all very grey it's all very mm. vague um, but ultimately, uh, there were two questions that United had to answer. And, and the questions were, is Mason Greenwood guilty of, of the things that he was accused of? The answer they came to was no. And then the second question was, uh, do we want Mason Greenwood still to be a, a, a footballer at this club, given the audio and given everything else? And ultimately, their answer to that was also a no. On what grounds? You said that the, the reason was explained at some length. So what, what was the logic for the second no? Well, I guess the logic behind the, the second no is that there are other parties involved here, the, the women's team being a, a crucial one. Um, other players possibly within that senior leadership group in the Manchester United squad. None of this, of course, will have come out. But but speculating, you would you would imagine there are people involved in the club, heavily invested in the club, and even fans in the club as well, that the club would have taken a, a back step and seen, OK, the, the second no is probably a no because all of those people, their opinions matter on, on this as well. Uh, and overwhelmingly, the, the the reaction to him returning, it seemed, was going to be negative. Rachel Riley, the counter and a presenter, was who's a massive fan of United since a kid, basically said, if if, if Mason Greenwood uh, is allowed to continue here, I, I'll stop supporting the club. And that was a sentiment, I think, shared by a lot of fans. There's something distasteful about defining your moral outlook on an issue like that by a straw poll. Yeah, 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. And um, I, I think it's left a bad taste regardless in, in, in United fans' mouths. It's just one of those issues that... It, leadership at, at, at Old Trafford has been in question for some time. Fans have wanted the lasers out for, for a significant period of time. Um, Richard Arnold now could have... Look, it, the statement last week was basically that this decision is going to be down to Richard Arnold alone, um, which you might think is strong leadership, but really this decision could have been come to a long, long time ago in a far more, I guess succinct fashion they could have done it in, in a much better light so it's one of those issues look they kind of wanted to see there was an infamous incident of a, of a footballer who was a, a convicted rapist David Goodwillie uh, a number of years ago uh, and signed for a club and then before he managed to play his first game for the club you know there was massive backlash and, and of course he was he was let go so this this is not the first time this is Without wanting test. to take the leap that Manchester United or any other club should act in loco parentis, if this boy, uh, if this man, but as a boy when he joined, if he was mm. seven years old from his original engagement with the club, does it raise questions about the club's responsibility to take some kind of moral and ethical stance about those that it is inculcating in its way of working? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, it, it, it's, it's, an, it's an incident that has highlighted maybe to a lot of other football clubs and warned a lot of other football clubs how to and how not to go about business. Things like this crop up all the time. West Ham had an incident last year with one of their footballers, Kurt Zuma, who was filmed kicking a cat. You might remember this story and, and like viciously kicking a cat. Um, and, and there were all sorts of questions as to how they dealt with that. So football clubs have to deal with this these sorts of things. There's drink driving things always, unfortunately, as well. Um, but I think, Anton, ultimately, Manchester United fans will, will agree that it's, they've probably come to the right decision ultimately for the club, and maybe for the player as well because he'll head somewhere else, but, but, but maybe got there the wrong way. Shane Hannan, co-presenter of Off the Ball Breakfast. Thank you.